Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our second round of sessions for today. This is on assistive technology supports for literacy. So I hope that's um, what you heard to hear about today. This is a lot of information to go over in about, you know, a little about an hour of time. I would, I'm hoping to have some time for you to let you explore some of the things I'm going to show you. Um, I don't know how much it's going to how long it's going to run so we'll kind of have to see how it goes <clears throat> um i you do you are muted upon entry however you do have the option of unmuting yourself if you want to say something or answer a question or you can also um post something in the chat box i was having some issues in the last session where i have my chat box up but i wasn't able to see the chats that people were posting so hopefully that will not be the case now Okay, and I was having some technical difficulties, a little rusty on Zoom, hopefully it'll be better today. So who am I? My name is um, up for debate. Now, legally, I'm still Valerie Lill, but I did get married during the pandemic. So my name, once Social Security reopens, will be Valerie Chapman Jones. But for now, my email address is the same as it was last year, um, which is there. That is also my phone number. I can be reached via, you can call that or text me at that number. That's my work phone. And I also have a Twitter, um at account which is listed below um a little bit about my background i was a school-based speech and language pathologist for over 19 years prior to coming at different districts and i also did some early invention some other things um, prior to working at liu i've been here about 18 months as the assistive technology trainer and consultant so thank you so much for coming today <clears throat> and I will warn you, as a speech pathologist, this is not good. I'm losing my voice due to allergies. Um, I'm drinking my water, and hopefully I will be good for presenting the rest of the day, because I have two more after this. <laughs> um, hopefully all of you watched Tanya's introductory message this morning, so I don't have to go over this information. I'm just going to go through these slides quickly about the meeting norms. She talked about that in her introductory message this morning. Again, I would love engagement, some interaction, <clears throat> as I didn't get very much in my last session, but that's okay. People can be shy sometimes in this environment. Um, Act 48, again, if you want your credits, you talked about getting in by July 31st. If you want those free copies of the books, you gotta be one of the first 100 to get in there. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm gonna probably do that a lot. Um, so our objectives for today, what I'm going to talk about is I'm gonna talk about some ways Assist AT, I'm gonna use that a lot. I did not write out assistive technology every time. When you see AT, it's not at, it's assistive technology. How it can reduce barriers to allow all students to participate in academics. Now I'm gonna say, well, I'll get into that when we get to that part, but. <clears throat> um, and then I'm going to give you a variety of AT tools that can support your students in the area of literacy. So thinking written expression and reading, you know, falling under literacy. I hopefully, I'm hoping that you can get at least two tools that can help support your students. You know, we'll see. Hope because some of the things might be for younger kids, older kids, just different depending on your students and their ability levels. But hopefully you can find at least two that are gonna work for you or that you'd like to try. Okay, this is sort of the either chat or unmute yourself interactive component. Hopefully uh, you'll respond. So what are some of the learning challenges your students face? I'm guessing you came to the session because you have students who have some learning challenges in the area of literacy. So just to get an idea of what some of their challenges are that you're hoping AT for literacy could support. Uh, Val, I'm a uh, literacy intervention coach and oh, okay. K to five. So I'm, I decided to join your session because obviously at some point we're going to be doing a little bit more virtual than technology. So that's why I'm mm -hmm. here. <laughs> okay, good, good. And I see some comments in the Challenge back now. I will tell you, I see Melanie's count poor fine motor. I am not going to be talking about that in this presentation. I'm going to talk about written expression, but I do have resources on AT supports for fine motor skills and letter formation. 
I can, you can certainly email me and I can share you that information, but I don't believe I'm getting into that today. I think I'm keeping it more general written expression, but there are supports for that. But yeah, um, AT by definition, assistive technology is for special ed students. However, that doesn't, and I'm going to talk about this later. I'm getting ahead of myself. That doesn't mean these supports aren't going to be beneficial for your kids who are getting literacy support, for your kids coming into kindergarten who are all at different levels. These can be used. It's just by definition, not assistive technology, but I voice text on my phone pretty much every day. Do I, can I physically type? Yeah. But is voice texting easier? Yeah. So, well, again, I'll get into that, but you can use these for any students. So by definition, what is assistive technology? Again, it's anything that's going to improve the learning and capabilities of students with disabilities. Again, by definition, AT is for kids with disabilities. And of course, our goal is we want those students to all be independent regardless, as independent as possible, regardless of disabilities. And I realize not all of you are working with students with disabilities who are attending this session. Well, I think that's great because these supports can help other students. AT can reduce barriers for all of our learners, not just our students with disabilities. Again, what it does is AT can either change the complexity of what's presented, so making a task a little bit easier, or a different means of response. Again, and we'll go and you can see some of those examples or changing the complexity. So if a kid can't write, handwrite a response, what are some other options we have for them? A kid can't read the social studies text, what are some options we have for them, whether they have a disability or not? So just to clarify, is what they're using considered assistive technology? I kind of have it separated. No, yes, because sometimes you might not be sure, especially if you're a special educator, you might not be clear on that. And I'm just going to quickly get into that. If they can do the task without it, it's not AT. If they need that tool to perform the task, then it is. Um, if the um, this for your reg ed students, if that support is not related to a disability or the kid doesn't have a disability by definition it's not assistive technology that doesn't mean you can't use it for them but it just doesn't fall under that definition of assistive technology and i can give you an example my kid was when he was in sixth grade he wasn't in advanced ela class but they used grammarly which i'm going to talk about later it can be assistive tech for some kids to use grammarly for him it was not because he didn't need that support it was just kind of goes under the next one. If AT supports, oh, that would be nice for my kids to use. By definition, it's not AT, but for your kids with um, IEPs, if they need that to make progress on the classroom and goals, it is AT. And I'm going to go fast. I just have a lot of information. I can certainly um, slow down and get into this more, but I want to get to the literacy supports, but I just wanted to give some background on that. Again, I'm not getting into this too much today, but it's really important to know what operating systems your students are using um, because that will let you know what accessibility filters are already built in. Um, sorry, I should have created a Google poll for this. I didn't think about it. But what are your kids, you can post it in the chat or you can unmute and say, are your kids using um, Google or did they, you know, Chromebooks? Are they using iPads? Like what are they using? Because that would be helpful to know because I'm going to share supports for both, but there's different, you know, if everybody's doing Google, I would probably gloss over the iPads. If everybody's doing iPads and Apple. Okay, Chromebooks. Both. Okay. <laughs> Guess I should have done a Google poll. I probably, uh, a Zoom poll. That's new to me. I haven't done that before, and that's why I didn't do it that way. But I, I should have done it that way. Okay. Well, at least we know one person's at least using both. So that tells me I definitely will talk about both the iPad and Chrome support, AT supports. Um, just before we get into this, for this is for you specifically for your Google Chrome, your Google kids. If you're using Chromebooks, Chrome extension at apps. I need to do a little segue on it because I am going to be showing a lot of these. And if you haven't used them before or are not even, I didn't even know they existed back when I used, worked on a school that used Chromebooks. I didn't even know these existed. So you need to, um, I did want to go a little bit and installing them in case you want to install some of these today that I'm going to talk about. Um, extensions are just something you can add to your computer to make it work in a different way. I'm actually using one right now. I don't know if you can tell, but my 
background, my slides, it doesn't look like crystal clear white. The color's a little bit different. I was getting really bad headaches from um, looking at the screen all day. So I actually am using one that turns the brightness down and it kind of gives it a bit of an orangish hue. It's called a screen shader. It's supposed to be better for your eyes and it really does help. So I'm using one of them now, an extension, just as an example. But how you're gonna find extensions, they have a store. You can literally type in Chrome Web Store and it'll come up and you can search the store. There's three ways to search. Type in the name in the extension. Again, I'm gonna tell you names of extensions today. You can just type them into the store to find them. Um, you can do a general search. Like if you don't know the name of something, you can just type it in there. Or I will tell you, this is literally how I personally as the AT tech do it. I never go in the Chrome store to do it. I type in a Google search extension and the name of the extension or extension and what I wanted to do and they'll come up. And that's just how I personally do it. But any of these three ways are going to work to find the things I'm going to share today. And this is what's going to come up. Um, and you literally will click on add to Chrome and it's going to add them. And again, this is not an extension, a Google accessibility training, but just because some of the things I'm sharing are Google accessibility, I wanted to just spend some time showing you how to do that. And then actually I'm going to exit out of the program. I'm going to show you real quick just because I have some and they're going to show up up here. I don't know if you can see that on my bar. These are my active extensions. They're showing up here is where your extensions are going to show up. Let me just go back to the presentation. Again, that might you can always go back and review this information later. I just don't want to spend all day on that, but it is important to know how to do that just because there's tons of really good extensions in there. Um, and I also just going to recommend this adding something called extensity should be your first one because you can use it to turn on and off the extensions. So I'm going to show you just mine real quick. So extensity looks like kind of like a yin yang sign. Here's all my extensions. You can see I have a ridiculous number, hundreds, and I can just toggle them on and off by clicking on them. And you see how that disappeared? Otherwise, you're going to get a million extension across your bar and the, and the kids, it's going to have that on their computer and it's going to make them a little bit bonkers. So I would suggest not doing that. I mean, ext downloading extension as your first one. Extensity, excuse me. Again, that's for any extensions and there's information. Again, I don't want to spend all of our time going into the background of how to do that. If you're going to test any of the extensions I showed you today, do it on Wikipedia. They are designed to be accessible pages. And sometimes I will tell you, Chrome Accent extensions do get wonky and they don't like, why isn't it working? It happened to me during a training in February. It was kind of embarrassing. So try it on Wikipedia, but I will tell you, sometimes they don't always work. But I try to recommend ones that are usually some of the better ones. Okay, so now I'm, I didn't want to spend, again, I went through that super quickly. If you've never heard of Chrome Accent extensions, you can certainly contact me or you can go back to that part of the presentation of the slides and I'll tell you how to install them. But not everybody here might be using Chrome. Some of you might be using iPads or Apple products and things that they're not available on. I'm gonna talk about a combination of tools. So I'm gonna to start with no tech tools. Because again, I'm also thinking, thinking about your kids and remote instruction, what's gonna be available to them at home and you know what they have. Some of these things might work at home, some of them might not. No tech tools. You don't need anything other than the user to work. No computer, no batteries, you know, nothing. It's just something, and maybe something they could have in the home environment or you might have at school. So I'm gonna give some example of some for literacy. And some of these you may have seen, you know, teachers are using slant boards. For example, I'm using, I don't have a slant board on my laptop, but I have a book under my laptop to prop it up. Some kids need slant boards. That's a no tech support for literacy to give them that angle. OTs often will recommend those. Highlighting tape or highlighters you might be using to help students follow text. Page fluffers. Now this is for your kids with more significant fine motor impairments that maybe have difficulty turning pages in a book. Um, I have anything in blue and underlined in this presentation, which there are tons of things that are blue underlined. They are all hyperlinked. So if you click on that, it's going to take you to a web page explaining exactly what that is or take you to the link. 
So page fluffers, again, that's if you have kids who have trouble turning pages, it's gonna give you ideas of how to help them do that independently. Wiki sticks, um, OTs are always big fans of wiki sticks. You can use them, they're like the little sticky things. You can use them to follow along in books. And again, I'm not gonna show you every single thing just in the interest of time, but you do have this hyperlinked in there. But again, you can put a strip of wiki stick underneath the text and that can help a student follow along with their finger. Colored overlays. Now, the research on covered overlays is mixed. Some say it's great and they work. Other research will tell you these don't do anything for kids, but some people insist they help them. So again, maybe they see better with blue covering the text or yellow or orange. Um, and again, this is a hyperlink to that information on colored overlays and how that could help some students as a no tech support. Okay. Next, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend more time on the high tech supports that are um, available. And again, I have them grouped based on the type of technology. I'm sorry, my goodness. Okay. So high tech tools, they need advanced technology to use. Now there's a such thing as mid tech or light tech tools. However, for literacy, and when I, if you come into my math presentation later today, I'm going to share some mid tech tools for math. But in literacy, eh, there really aren't anything that I would necessarily recommend or use in that area. So that's why I'm going to jump from the no tech right to the high tech. Advanced technology to use. Again, in a remote learning, we're using advanced technology. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a lot of examples of ones. Digital books, um, may, and again, thinking of remote learning, you can use these in remote learning. These are also good for face-to-face. -face. So I wanted to give you some options of digital books. And again, these are all hyperlinked. Reading IQ, Epic, Unite for Literacy. These are all, I personally am a big fan of Epic. I used to use it all the time when I was a um, school-based speech pathologist. I used it with my life skill students. But does anybody use digital books here or has used digital books during digital learning? I see some yeses. Yeah, you can shake your heads because I can see you. So if you have your screen on. So yes, some of those. Again, I have them hyperlinked. Again, Epic is one I really do like a lot. I'll just click on that one just because I'm used to use it a lot. And of course, it's going to be very slow. And you can make a free account. That's one great thing about it. I don't know why it's not letting me. It should have my information already in here. I don't know why it's not. All right, I'm not gonna waste time doing that just because I don't know why my login's not showing up, probably because of a update. But um, again, these are books on, for various, a lot of these are gonna be geared towards younger kids. So thinking elementary level, but you can search by topic and grade level. Some of them, oh, I'll get into that in a bit. But again, digital texts. Especially now, you can't have textbooks to hang out, hand out to the class, or if you have your guided reading group and things and their kids are virtual, digital books are going to be an option for those kids. Text levelers. These are sometimes text is too difficult for students to read. Um, this is just a way that you can level text. Now, I'm going to tell you, too, the first set of tools I'm talking about or just available on the computer. It doesn't matter what operating system you use. Then I'm going to get into ones that are specific to the OS. So re I can click on, hopefully it'll work, rewordify. Basically, literally, you would paste your text into this box and it hit rewordify text and it's gonna give it to them in a simpler form. So if directions on something are too long and the kids don't understand it, they could paste it into rewordify the text and it's gonna explain it in a little bit simpler way for them. Or a question is on a test is very complicated or text on a website. Crafty level will tell you the reading level of certain texts. And again, this is a Chrome extension, I believe. I don't know why I put that with this group. Okay. Um, audio books. Now, digital, a lot of digital books, for example, like Epic, a lot of those are available, have an audio book option. Other digital books do not have an audio book option. It just depends. But these are all example of audio books. And I tried to put a variety on there because I don't know your grade levels. And it looks like there's definitely some elementary here, but students who are not reading on grade level, but maybe, you know, you know, you get your kindergartners who don't even know letters, but audiobooks are a way for them to get literacy. You know, if it's independent reading times and kids are getting their book baskets out and they can't read the letter A, they could be listening to audiobooks perhaps as an option during that time. 
Story Nori is one. These, ha again, and a lot of these you can just search. You can, there's different, they give you the grade levels and things there. And a lot of the Story Nori ones are like unique only to this website, but they are free. LibriVox has, um, these are read by actual people. These will be ones, if you have some older kids, LibriVox is a good one to use because there's actual, you know, classics and real books that are available regarding um, um, on this website. So, you know, you could search for them as long as they're a public domain. These are any books that are in the public domain. So, you know, if it's, you know, I can like Charles Dickens, but it depends on what they are trying to add to this. There you go. So there's some to see if anything comes up by him. Eh, no, it's all things with him in the title. So that didn't really give me what I wanted, but there's an advanced search option. But again, if it's in the public domain and somebody's recorded it, it could be on there. NLS is a design for kids with visual impairments, but it says for the blind and the print disabled. Again, your kids who have maybe um, learning disabilities of reading and you can download books and find, and it gives a lot of resources there. So I just wanted to give you, and again, there's many, many other resources. I'm just giving some examples. And if you need more resources, like you say, I need more examples of audio books or I need more digital books, you can certainly contact me and I can give you a list much longer than the ones I'm showing you today. Oops, I did not want to do that. I don't know why that just happened. Okay, text to speech feedback. Some of you, and again, this is saying about the kids who come in at different levels. You have kids who can't read on grade level. These are gonna be examples. I did not organize these the way I thought. To, I'm sorry, these are all different um, systems mixed together. These are things that will do text-to-speech for you. And they work on different platforms. Speechify is gonna work on any platform because it's a website and it's gonna turn any text and it's free, or there's free aspects. Again, it'll tell you, can create audiobooks for anything, PDFs, human voices, things like that. So you can do that on this, through this website. Speechify is also available as an iPad app also. People who use Chrome apps and extensions, I have found when I've done trainings on this and I've gotten feedback from teachers, their favorite to use as say like a learning support teacher or just even a reg ed teacher for kids who aren't reading on grade level and need that text to speech is Clara Reed. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, but that's, I have a link. So all the things that are hyperlinked, again, if it's a Chrome app, an extension, there it is. And there's a video that shows how to do it. You can read the reviews. And I'm gonna just open a Wikipedia page. In case I have time to show you, or in case you want me to show you any of these, like I said, I'm going to try to leave some time at the end. I don't know, Wikipedia. I love koalas, so that's usually what I use as my go-to Wikipedia for testing things. And I'll probably do this and it won't work. But I was going to try to show you this one just because a lot of people do like it. And it's also good for your English language learners because it can translate into different languages. So here it's under my extensions. Of course, it's not going to work now. Typical. Okay, we'll see. Um, yeah, it wouldn't. It says it wouldn't let me do it because. Okay, well, now it's not going to let me do it because it's. Speak, yes, it's what you're supposed to do is it's not going to work because there's an update that has to happen, but it should work if I do it this way. The koala bear so it's going to speak the selected test. The koala bear, a Vasculartal cinereus, is an arboreal herbivorous marsupial native to Australia. And then you can change it. it. The only okay, I'm going to stop speaking. There's a different way you can do it. And its closest living relatives I hit stop are the koala bats, which are members of the family Vumbitidae. The koala is found in coastal I'm areas in the mainland's eastern and southern regions, inhabiting Queensland, New. Okay. Sorry about that. But what it's supposed to do, and again, it's set, oh, you were not supposed to get on that. There we go. There's an update, so I'll have to fix that. I'm sorry about that. I must have just happened because I tested all these. But a little box comes up with like a play button, a stop button, and a pause button. And most kids know how to use those kind of buttons, and they can hit play, but you can also highlight the text. Um, Prismo Go is basically does the same thing, and Dolphin Easy Reader or for the iPad. So I know somebody said they use both. Um, iPads and that. So I 
if you, I have these available also in the AT Lending Library, but I also have the free version. But again, instant text capture and how to read it. I have links there to show you how to do it. But yes, yeah, so you can like take a picture of a document and it can read it out loud. So your kids who can't read a worksheet, for example, and have an iPad could use Prisma Go or Dolphin Easy Read. Text summarizers. And again, so we had a text leveler to make it simpler. A text summarizer, if a kid, it's a long passage and the kid is, it's way too long for the kid to read. They're never gonna understand it. You can look at using a text summarizer. And I have two here, internet abridged and resumer. Now obviously internet abridged, this is the Chrome extension. This is going to, and I'll just show you, it'd be easier for me to show you the example on their website than try to demonstrate it since that didn't work last time. But again, they have the Wikipedia page. They looked up Stanford University and got these pages. This is going to give you an abbreviated version of that same text. It's gonna give you the key information and make it a little bit less to read. So if there's you know, an article that students have to read, you want, and they, it's just too long for them and they can't read it, you can try something like, inter, again, it's an internet article, specifically internet abridged is going to summarize you know, an internet piece. And ReZoomer is another Chrome extension. It's gonna do the same thing also. It's gonna summarize them relevantly in one click. Now again, are these extensions perfect? No. Um, I think Internet Abridge is a little bit better than Resumer. Sometimes what they think is the important information and what you as a teacher think might not be the same, but it's an option there for you. Um, there are AT supports for literacy that meet multiple needs. Again, your kids who maybe are not reading on grade level might need a little bit of everything. They might need audiobooks and text-to-speech and a text summarizer. They might need a little bit of everything. And um, <clears throat> one that is fairly new that just came out that has a lot of AT built into it is called Helper Bird. It's a little bit of a strange title, but I have a link there. And you can also, they also have a website and there's a nice little video, but it's designed for um, accessibility. Now they were temporarily making the whole thing for free, but I believe that ended on June 30th, but there's a lot of options available on Helper Bird. It doesn't just, in addition to reading out, out loud, you can also make some visual adjustments to things also, to your text. Read and write for Chrome. Again, you can Google Read and Write for Chrome. This is a Chrome extension. Here, there is a free, ver any, a free version available, um, but there's also a paid full version. Unfortunately, some of the, I'll say, better assistive technology accessibility supports are like that, where there's a free version or you get a free trial, but then the full version does more. But even the um, free version of Read and Write for Google Chrome does have a lot of options available to it. I have that installed on here. I'm trying to open it, but of course it's not going to work. I don't have a wicket. Let me see if I can open a Wikipedia again. I'm Yes, some of these that are better ones I want to show you, but of course, you know, when you're in the presentation, it's not going to work, but like, yeah, I don't know why it's not. These extensions don't see, need to, see. okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something. Something's wonky with my extensity. Oh, wait, there it goes. See how this, it's, yes. All right, I'm going to allow it. Okay, so you can see this bar comes up at the top when I have it enabled. Yes, learn about the premium features. No thanks. That's the paid version. But it doesn't, but still, even in the free version, there are some options. You can hover, it can speech again. You see the play, the pause, the stop. It's going to read text for you. If you pay for the full, there's a translator. But if you pay for the full version, obviously, you get some annotation tools and some other things. But you, anybody can get the free version. So those can do multiple things. And again, I believe read and write, some of these you can get either a free 30 day trial and some of them you can get, if you use a teacher account, you can get, you can get the full version, but obviously your students are not going to have access to the full version unless it's paid for. One thing I'm gonna show you also that I have available is, I don't know if anybody uses Symbaloo's, I love them, but it's an easy way to organize your favorites. Cause you know, you click on your favorites menu and you get like a zillion things and you forget what's there. Um, I have on my AT webpage, and I'm going to show you the link. I have Symbaloo's 
So if you click on this hyperlink, it's gonna take you to my symbol, but you can also find them on my LIU webpage. Where this is going to, of course, ads pop up because it's free, but this is gonna point you, these are all shortcuts. So you click on one of these, it's going to take you to that. For example, Prismo Go, LibriVox, I talked about Rewordify. If I click on that little square, it's also going to take me to that. And on these supports, I have a lot that I did not get into. Again, in the interest of times, time I could talk about, but here's another one. Recorded books, audiobooks for dyslexia. You know, there are some other resources on here that I did not, that I will not get a chance to get into. But you have access to that symbol for some other AT supports for literacy. Again, I didn't want to overwhelm you and show you 50, but if you want to see more, you can click on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to talk, that was literacy, so specifically thinking about reading. Excuse me. I also want to share some AT supports for writing. And again, not necessarily the fine motor component of writing, but more looking at, some of these will be good for fine motor, but the written expression part of writing also. So it's a little bit of both. So again, the no tech supports, the slam boards I mentioned earlier, highlighters some kids need, again, highlighting the line and makes it a little bit easier for them to write in it. Pencil grips, um, this is just a hyperlink to a resource for a lot of different pencil grips. That again, it's a mix of fine motor and the written expression. Um, one thing that I have, recommended to people is this site is called Incompetech. That's like a horrible name, but it is free online custom paper. So again, some kids, you can see all the different types. Graph paper is on here. Again, when I talk about math supports, I'm definitely going to get into this a little bit more, but there's all these free papers you can download and customize. So if you need this kind of paper, for example, they need to write a list, a ledger, you know, financial list, probably not. Classic writing, there you go, your notebook paper, your line paper, your penmanship paper. You can customize it, you can click on it. It's free, to, they're ads because it is free. But yeah, you can, how thick do the kids need the lines? You can adjust that. How big of a space, maybe these are too narrow. You know what, my kiddo needs extra, they need thick lines and wide spaces. Maybe they have some visual issues and they would benefit from, you can talk to your OT or your vision person. Maybe they would see a lot better if it was a darker blue line. And then all it's gonna do is you can download your own PDF. It's gonna, and there you go. And I can print that out for the kid. So I changed the way that notebook paper looked and now I, they can print it out and have a notebook paper that's going to meet their needs a little bit better. So I do really like that there's because they have a lot of different papers available on there. And the keyword, I love things that are free. Um, there are also free adaptive paper. This is going to take you to some links of other adaptive paper. Again, Incompetech is nice because you can customize it. But again, you need some handwriting paper. This is a list of all different adapted papers. And again, I'm giving you these also. These are also great if you're face-to-face -face instruction, but if you're virtual instruction too, these are some other, you could share these links to the parents. If you have a student who maybe has a printer at home, which would be lovely, a color printer, and we know they all don't, but this is some paper maybe you could share these links with parents and they could customize paper and print paper out for their students. Again, I'm aware not all our students have access to a color printer at home, but for ones that do, that's an option too in our virtual and for learning environment. Um, some other no tech supports. And again, these are under no tech, even though those are things you have to print, the user doesn't need to use technology. Once the paper's printed out, they can use it as paper. Um, thicker crayons and pencils, shorter crayons and pencils. A lot of your OTs are going to recommend those for your kids with some of those fine motor difficulties. I wanted this to go one at a time, but that's okay. It didn't, my slides did not do what I wanted to do. Excuse me. <clears throat> so some high tech supports for writing. Speech to text. I always show people this because people don't know what's there. Again, you get those kids, and I've had kids like this, who refuse to write and don't want to write, and they won't put anything on a piece of paper. And again, I'm just thinking of particular students I know. Um, something I like in Google Docs that I'm going to show you. Again, you might know this is here, and if you don't, great. I'm hoping you can learn something new. I just show this one because people don't know what's there. If you're using Google Docs under Tools, there's literally a voice typing. You just click on it. Of course, oh, you know what? Let me hold on. I have this extension still enabled. I need to turn it off. 
That's why you want to download extensity because if you have these extension enabled, they're going to show up when you don't want to. So you just, that way I can just turn it off easily. Get that off of there. Okay, so I'm going to go under tools. Oh, you know what? It's probably not going to work for me because I'm sharing with you. Let's, oh wait, now there's a click to speak. I'm hoping it works. So you just click on it and it'll start typing whatever you say. It's not perfect, period. It won't put the punctuation in unless you say it, period. Just like voice texting, but there you go. I had a kid who would not write anything on a piece of paper, ever. Would he talk in a Google Doc? Yes, what's your choice? Do you want him to have nothing done or do you want him to get something? Using voice texting and Google Docs may be a way to go. And it's super easy. So I just, again, some of you might know that's already there, but that's just something that I find a lot of people don't know exists. And I always like to share that when I'm talking about um, supports for writing. <clears throat> I literally just had someone asking about this this morning. PDF, especially now, because virtual instruction, you might be sending worksheets and things via PDF. And I'm sorry, I'm going through these kind of quickly. It's just in the interest of time. Um, that's why I have everything hyperlinked. PDF and document annotators. This is something where I use Kami. I actually have used it working from home a bunch of times. And there's, I use the free versions of everything, not the paid. But I'm going to click on that so you can see it. You can make an account and all that. I have a free account. <clears throat> but it's, if there's a PDF I need to type on, I can open one of these annotators and I can type on it and save it and you can you know attach it to an email or share it on Google I have done it let me see if I can quickly find one that I have actually on my computer since I'm sharing my screen let me just minimize this real quick Oops, that didn't work. because I do I, I do have some actually on my computer that I can show you that I've done not recently but in the spring, some of these are more recent, when I was working, I had some work I had to do and I had to type on it. Of course, I can't find them quickly. No, unfortunately, I can't find one for you really quickly. Sorry about that. But it allows you to type on PDFs. Cami and DocHub, personal preference, they do about the same thing. If you're an iPad user, Snap type is an option again and Prismo Go lets you do that too. Um, well, no, that reads it, but Snap type is an app that there's a free version of. And you basically literally snap a picture. And again, these are hyperlinked. You're going to snap a picture and you can see on here, you, they can make text boxes and type. I had a student who had a personal iPad because his fine motor skills were so, so, so poor. He could not fill out a worksheet if his life depended on it. He did all his fifth grade worksheets on SnapType. Took a picture of the worksheet, he typed it in, he uploaded it to Google and sent it to his, on um, the Google Drive and sent it to, emailed it to his teacher. And then as he completed every single worksheet he did in fifth grade. So SnapType's an option of document annotator you can use. And it does have a free version in, if you're using iPads. Spelling and grammar checker. Obviously, a lot of kids, and I said how my son used this in a regular education, actually an advanced ELI class. Um, but Grammarly is a nice tool for that where you can easily, and again, this is good, these are all hyperlinked. It's going to, it's a Chrome option. But I know professionals who use this. I don't know if any of you have used it, but I know like adults who like are taking classes, for example, and have to write papers, they use Grammarly. It's going to offer wording choices, spell check, you know, different, different ways, grammar check. So that's an option if kids really struggle in those areas and they can't edit their own work and they are poor spellers, Grammarly is a great option to use. Voice recording and digital notes are becoming popular. I know, um, like if you anyone heard of like a live scribe pen, those kind of things are becoming very popular right now. Some other options that will do the same thing that will record voice and allow you to take digital notes at the same time so you can go back and listen to those notes. Again, this kind of thing would be for your secondary students, not your elementary. Um, a lot of the other things I'm showing you can be good for elementary or secondary, but this is something more for secondary or your older students who can handle it. Mic note and voice to take notes app are, um, excuse my voice is not very good, are um, ones you can use. Otter AI is a website and it's a paid service though, but you can get so many, it will record, it will transcribe. Um, so a teacher doing a lecture, it's gonna transcribe the lecture for the students so they can have access to that. Oops, 
I don't, oh, I don't need to change the page on you there. Graphic organizers obviously are big. Um, I'm going to show you an iPad app one, Poplet Light. Again, that's light means it's a free version. There's a full version, but it's an easy way to make a graphic organizer on the iPad. So if you have kids using iPads who need help with writing and need graphic organizers to write, Poplet Light. Again, it's a light version. It doesn't have all the features, but it's free on the iPad. So that's something you could try to download if they need help in that area. And again, there are more options than these, and I'll show you in a minute. Crick Software is a software company. They make a bunch of different products. Their products are available on any format. I'm going to give you the link. They are not free. However, they all have a free 28-day trial. So you can try it with a kid and if it really works. So they have different solutions. So you can see Windows and Mac, iPad and Chromebook they have. And Clicker Writer and Docs Plus are the new ones. They had different ones. They used to be called something else, which I'm not remembering. But if you have an iPad or Chromebook, or if you, again, Docs Plus, the Clicker, the Clicker Writer is for your younger kids. Docs Plus is for your older kids. They also, I know there's at least one SLP here other than me in attendance. They have um, some AAC things there also. But I just am presenting this for these purposes. But again, AAC is on there too if you're interested as an SLP. But they are writing tools that um, some of them have picture support. And again, you can try that free for 28 days, then they're going to want you to pay for it. But you can see at least if it's an option. But what I want to show you too is I have an AT for writing symboly. And again, these are specifically, I have a separate symbol for fine motor. You can find it on my webpage, but these are all supports. There's the poplet I talked about, but there's lots of other eight. There's Cami. I talked about the free paper I talked about, but there are, those are just some, I'm not going to sit here and give you 50 resources. If you want some more, you want to learn about some other options, go to the, click on the symbol. I do try to update these as soon as I find out about some new things. They tend to get full quickly. As you can see, I only have a couple spaces left on there. Mind Mop is another graphic organizer similar to Pop, Poplet. That one you can get on um, Chrome. <clears throat> but again, so these are, this is somewhere you can go if maybe the ones I present you aren't quite meeting your needs, but you're looking for something similar. I'm just trying to show you some of the more popular ones. All right, we do have a few minutes and I did want to give you some time to look at some of those supports or maybe ask questions, or if you want me to demonstrate a specific one, like I'm really interested in blank and hopefully I can get it to work. Again, I, I'm not guaranteeing that because I see already Clara Reed was a bit wonky this morning. Are there any ones that you're particularly interested in or want me to go back over something that I talked about? Again, I'm leaving some time for that. I will gladly go back to any parts of the presentation or any of the tools that I talked about. Or if you want time to try to download Extensity, if you use Chrome, that's fine too. So I didn't want to talk for an hour straight. I wanted to just talk for part of it and then give you some time. What's everybody thinking? Give me some feedback so I know. Let me see helper bird. Okay. If I can get it to work. They actually have a website. And again, as I told you, what I do is I literally Google things and that's how I find them. I don't use the Chrome extension store hardly ever. I do it. So helperbird.com. I can actually put that right there in the chat. Full version Cosmo. They did have it for free for a while. But it's an extension. There you go. And it's going to give you text to pizza. Board. I, I can, I have too many things open here. So hang on. Let me see if I can get the extension to work. Let me turn, close out some of these other extensions that I've opened. Because sometimes when you get to, I don't know what this puzzle piece thing is. And it's kind of annoying me because I've never, it's never been there before. And it's showing up, of course, today when I'm presenting on extensions. I have no idea what's going on here. I've never seen, okay. And now it's not even opening my extensity. Oh, okay, there it goes. Upper bird. Again, when you have extensity, it's gonna put them alphabetically. 
and a pop-up just came up. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's what's new. There's, there's videos, which is great on the website, but I have the bad feeling that this is not all right. Let me try to go to the Wikipedia page again. And this is a very new extension. Helper Bird just came out, I want to say, right before the pandemic. Why is it off? Something is wrong with my extensions. I don't know why they're coming up like this. There, I want it. Oh, there we go. I apologize. This is what I, I have it on and it's saying it's off. Oh, upgrade. Okay, there we go. If you click on it, it's going to give you what it does. So you can change the text, the font, you can magnify so your kids with some visual impairments, if the words need to be spaced, letter spacing. Again, you can see if it says pro next to it, um, that means you need the full version to get to that. But these things that don't say pro are going to be available for free. Again, these are, they have a lot. Again, color blindness displays. I'll go back up to the reading since I'm, um, print and speech preferences, highlighting, if you want to highlight in a certain color. I have not used Helper Bird that much, so I, there we go. So I went into reading mode. Oh, it did not work on a, so it changed the physical appearance. You can see it changed the, the way the site looked because it's considered reading mode and your theme. Let's see if it will change. Ooh. So there, see how it reversed the background? So your kids um, who might need a darker background, that's what reader mode does. Immersive reader is um, for it to read out loud. I hit enable, of course it didn't do anything. No, I don't, I'm, I don't know why it's not working for me today. We can take a screenshot of something on there. Translate, so thinking your, e, your L's, there you go. They give a whole bunch of languages that, and again, I don't know why it's not reading out loud for me right now. I usually do not have any issues with this one. This is a, you know, but if you have a student who speaks French, it's gonna, oh, we clicked it, to, it took me to Google Translate. I'm sorry that that one is not working on me for me today, because that one is a new one and it's pretty good. But again, this is the issue sometimes with some of these things. They do not work, unfortunately, the way they're supposed to. And I apologize for that. I wish I had more control over that, but I don't know if I have an update on my computer. Something is wonky with my extensions, and I will have to finish that before the math one. Preferred translator. Um, as for a video, I don't know. But have, I am not sure about that because... Um, that's, I don't know any videos. I don't know of anything that, that's something I, just because I don't do a lot with, um, Eng, uh, there's a question about um, translating videos. I don't know about that because the work I do in assistive technology is special ed and L's is sort of, you know, that's something a little bit different. I know about some technology, like I said, Clara Reed and some of the other ones will read text for you in another language, but I'm not sure with video and having um, Spanish text showing, I. I do not know. I'm sorry. I wish I could answer that. Sorry, Melanie. It's just not L's and language translation is not something I have much experience with. But I know, you know, you're working at Vita, so that's important there. If I, I can write that down, I'll write myself a note and I'll see if I can find something. Or I can also talk to some other AT techs. I'm really sorry that the things I'm trying to show you are not working as they're supposed to. Like I said, this, I don't know what this puzzle piece is. This has never been here before, and I'm not sure why it's there. It almost looks as if Chrome made their own extensity built into it, because that's, that must be an update. I've never, I've never seen that before. You think that's what that is. I'll have to actually look into that because I've never seen that until today and I'm on this computer all the time. Are there any of the other reading or literacy or reading or 
other areas you would like me to talk about or go into or attempt to show you again i don't know why some things are not working so well today what are all right well i'm going to go on to the next page slide. so i'm just going to ask you guys this and get some audience participation what are some of the tools that i showed that you think you might be able to use or that you might be interested in because again i gave you some examples but i don't know what the teachers out there need especially looking thinking for a digital what are some of the resources you think you might be able to use with your kids now keep in mind if your kids are using chromebooks if you have them download those extensions on their chrome account it's linked to their account it is not linked to a device so they can log into any computer and access those chrome extensions and again i didn't get into that today this is not a google accessibility training but that's one nice thing about using those extensions it doesn't have to be in the teacher's computer the kids can get it on their personal computer at home And Competech, yeah, those are, yeah, I, um, I had an OT recommended it to me quite a few years ago. And yeah, um, it's a great, easy, and again, free, especially if you have access to a color printer, you can, and I'm going to talk about when I talk about math supports this afternoon, because you can print out customizable graph paper for your kids who need graph paper for math. But then again, the lined paper is good for, you know, kids who need something other than your standard notebook paper. And I apologize about helper bird and Claro. Something with the Chrome extensions, I'm gonna to have to look into that to see why they are not working. I'll have to figure that out before this afternoon when I present on math. Are any of you going to interested in math extensions or going to attend that? Or you might well, we know some of you are literacy specialists. No. That's fine. I'm just again, if I'm gonna talk about some specific things for math. Some of there will be some overlap if you do attend that later because like the incompetent graph paper and i'm going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> chrome extensions and things but there will be some specific tools that are available on the ipad um and on the ipad also if you're familiar with our assistive tech lending library those some of those tools that i said like um the clicker products i do have the full version of some of those on our AT Lending Library iPads, if you'd ever want to borrow those and try them. Some of the things I do have full versions of that I only have the free versions in the presentation. But um, you can get free trials of most of the things for a limited period of time or get a light version. But I do have full versions of some things. Okay, I'm just going through. So next steps that I just want to highlight. Try at least two of the things presented. If you run into any issues like I had today, please, you can email me or call me and I can try to help you through that. I don't know what was going on today, but something is wonky with my extensive. I did want to highlight some upcoming related professional development that might be of interest that just that are at, um, looking forward into the fall. If you're interested more in the area of AT and want to build your capacity, for example, if you're a special education teacher or anyone who, or technology coach and interested in learning more about how to build your capacity in AT in general, because I'm going to offer a full day training October 8th. And again, our trainings will likely be virtual at this point. Also, um, Google Chrome accessibility is something I could talk about a lot more than the literal like 10 minutes I spent on it. I'm going to do um, two three hour trainings on October 14th. And hopefully I can work out my Google Chrome issues between now and then. The AM PM sessions are both gonna be identical. They are available, these are free for anyone within the LIU footprint, um, public educator in the LIU footprint. Um, but I'm gonna go into much more in Google Chrome accessibility as far as what's built into Chrome. That And um, I'm gonna talk about a lot more Chrome apps and extensions and hopefully they'll work then and that also will give you some time to explore so that's a much longer version of and I'm going to talk about AT for fine motor math um, literacy I'm going to talk about a lot of different options in group on that accessibility training day just just two things coming up if you might be interested in those and don't forget to fill out our evaluations again they're due by July 31st if you want your credit for them and get your free book if you're one of the first 100. And when you do the evaluation, think about if it met your expectations, what information you might share with some colleagues and any key information resonated for you. And there's our hyperlink to the day one schedule for the remaining sessions this afternoon. I'm gonna be talking at 1.30 about um, MTSS and UDL 
And then I, if you're interested in math accessibility, that is at 2.45 this afternoon. But I'm sorry some of the technology didn't work. That is the way it goes sometimes, especially in these virtual environments. Um, thank you so much for attending today. I hope you, the keynote will be starting in about 20 minutes, the second keynote. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Let me stop sharing the screen.